How you doing? My name is Redding Rondo, and I am from Boston, Massachusetts, South End. I grew up down in Boston, and I am going to start telling stories on YouTube about my experiences in life. I was a drug addict, gangster. I was, I'm going to tell my whole stories in, you know, short episodes to get viewers, you know what I mean? I'm trying to get viewers, and, and I know my stories are going to be well received if you're into jail stories, prison stories, and gangster stories. My stories are all true, and some of them are kind of unbelievable. I want to give you a story right now just to give you a taste of what I went through while I was in prison. And this, back in 1996, I believe, well, 97, I was in Concord State Prison. And I was in the yard playing handball. Now, the yard's set up where it's a huge yard and has a big track going all the way around. And so, if you're walking in to the left, there's um, a softball court and there's free weights. And to the right, there's the basketball courts and there's the um, handball courts. And there's a big track that runs all the way around it. And there's the big walls that surround it. And there's the fences. And then there's the blah, blah, blah. The uh, razor wire with the guards on all four sides with their fucking shotguns. Um, this one day in the summer back in 1997, I'm out in the yard playing handball with a buddy of mine, Kid Mario, from, um, where the hell is he from? That doesn't matter. He was from south of Boston. Anyways, we're playing handball, and a riot breaks out in the yard. I mean, a huge. I couldn't. I couldn't believe. I've never seen anything like this in my life. I seen it was between the black guys and the Puerto Ricans. They had. They were having a gang war, and I seen them run into the middle of the yard where the grass was, and they were pulling up the grass, and they were pulling out shanks they had hidden there. From weeks before, I had never seen anything like this in my life. I was I was a new timer at, at this point, and um, and I and the way it was set up where I was living, it was living in the dorms with a, in a four man cell, and I had two buddies that were down there in the middle of the riot, and then and I'm looking and I'm watching this thing break out, and it. Was, I start running towards the riot to, to run to my friends and my buddy Mario grabs him by the, the head of my hair and he's like, what are you doing? He goes, that's not us. You have nothing to do with that. That's between the blacks and the Puerto Ricans. And um, I witnessed murders of that day. I witnessed this this um, this black guy in a, in a wheelchair. He was a gang leader. He got shot and, and he got in a wheelchair and Puerto Ricans walked up to him and they sliced him up to kill them. There was they were picking up the bats and the free weights and they were just fucking beating each other and stabbing each other. There was this one Puerto Rican kid that was so scared. Now you're surrounded in that yard. I mean you can't get out of it. You're, it's it's a, it's first it's the fence with the razor wire and then you have a big 30 50 foot uh, concrete wall. Now this kid was so friggin' scared that he was trying to climb over the, the barbed wire, the razor wire. But they got him. They, they, he was up on the razor wire, slicing himself up, and they they ran up to that thing and they beat him to death. He was laying in the razor wire, and then um, dudes were just getting smashed with baseball bats and, and free weights and and. Um, yeah, it was it was an ugly day that day. I had never seen anything like it. It was it was merciless. 
I mean, they were, these guys were killing each other like they were killing bugs. I mean, it was ugly. Next thing you know, they have these, um, they have different COs. They have regular COs that do the, you know, that watch you and guide you and shit. And they have these other COs they call Ips. And these Ips are like, yeah, like a Gestapo, basically. The Gestapo. And um, they come out with all their weapons and, you know, the, the guards are up in the towers with the guns, with the rubber bullets, and they're shooting these motherfuckers. They're shooting these guys with the rubber bullets, and the tear gas comes out, and then, then, then the, the dogs, and then everybody's on the ground. Yeah, the whole yard's on the ground, and it's and then put your hands on your head, get on the ground, and then it's get up, take all your clothes off, put your hands on your head, and face the fence. And if anybody gets out of line. You will be shot. So there's like 200 guards stripped down to nothing with our hands on our heads. And we're facing the fence and they're coming around, they're going around to each and every one of us and they're turning us around and they're taking our hands and they're looking at our hands to make sure we don't have any any uh, bruises to see if we were in the fight or not. You know, that's how they went by it. If they looked to see if you were, if you had damage to your body. And a lot of guys were... <laughs> a lot, not of the white guys. They, I'm, not, and, uh, I'm not racist. I'm not racist at all. But in there, it was, um, you know, by race. You know, but um, that was one of... So what, what, what ended up happening is they went all around the yard. They searched us all. They got the guys that, you know, they thought did it. They locked down the jail for a fucking two weeks. We could, none of us could leave uh, where we lived. We had uh, all our meals sent to us. And um, that was uh, one of the first rides that I ever seen. That was a new experience to me, but... I have, I have so many stories that I know people will enjoy because, you know, not, I went to Concord when I got time, but before I got time, I was waiting trial, and where I was waiting trial was in Plymouth House of Correction, with, um, back in 95, there was all the Whitey Bulger and Bobby DeLuca and Stevie the Right from Man Fleming and Jimmy Matarano and Johnny Matarano and and uh, um, who else was there? What was a was it Darren Buffalino? All these Italian guys were on the on the on the block with me. I went I went to their block. I, I I have a lot of stories. I was with Cadillac Frank Salami. He was the head of the New England Mafia at the time. I was with Bobby DeLuca. He was the head of um, Rhode Island Mafia. And these guys were my friends. And um, I was with all the Charlestown kids that were doing the heist. They were robbing the armored car trucks and they were robbing banks. I was with so many Charlestown kids. These Charlestown kids. You know, they liked me, and they, they wanted me to be with them and move with them, and then I moved to, to the block where all the gangsters were, and all these gangsters, you know, all these big gangsters. These are the gangsters that Whitey was ratting out, Whitey Bulger. Whitey Bulger was ratting out all the Italian gangsters in New England because he was Irish, and he was in the Irish, the Winter Hill Gang, and he had... Um, a buddy of his that grew up with him that was younger than him but ended up getting into the FBI and he was Irish and they both came from the same projects so Whitey was giving him the Italian mob so he could do what he wanted you know what I mean he would give up the Italians and Whitey could just do what he wants and this this John Conley would protect Whitey 
I was with, I was amongst all these guys when they were getting sentenced. They were getting hit with the RICO Act. I was with Stevie Flemmy, that was Whitey Bulger's right hand man. He was on the block with us. This is before anybody knew that Whitey was ratting. These guys were all in their fucking sixties. Bobby Duluth was in his fifties. Steve, I mean, uh, Frankie Slemmy was 63 years old when I was with him. Stevie the Rifle and Flemmy was in his 60s. And I was 25. And I was a lion. And I was a tough motherfucker. Didn't take shit from anybody. I worked out every day. and made sure I ran every day. And these guys liked me. And these guys wanted me to hang with them. And I have stories. And... I can tell you my story how I grew up and how I became a hood and how I made money being a hood. I can tell you stories how I ended up in prison. I can tell you stories about prison. And I, and I think you'll enjoy these stories because um, <laughs> they're all very interesting. And why not? You know what I mean? Why not? Why not? See if people um, relate with me. I'm not a bad guy. I changed my life around. I'm a, I'm a citizen now. And I have stories that will will make you... I mean, I was a drug addict, too. And going to jail, being a drug addict, climbing the wall while you're sick. They throw you in a cell and they just tell you to fucking deal with it. You know? And I've done that a few times. Dealing with it. You know, I used drugs because I was, I was, um, had social, social anxiety. I didn't know it at the time, but I just, I needed something to, to relax me while I was out in the public. And it was, I, I used perks, but I hurt my hands in a fight using, and I got prescribed um, Percocets. And then, you know, I can tell you the stories how I gradually, I can tell you the stories of my drug habit days. And, 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 I, and I hope I can get, you know, viewers and subscribers. Can you be helping me out big time? Because being a gangster, being a drug addict, you don't get a 401k. That shit does not happen. All the money spent. <laughs> The RICO Act, you can't, you, because of the RICO Act, you can't, you can't do shit because it's, you get life bids now. And it, it, there's really nothing, it's all small. You're better off having a YouTube channel and trying to make money on YouTube, to be honest with you. And, uh, and, and uh, I'm a good guy. And I hope that you will subscribe to my channel and I hope that you will ask me questions. And, and I will answer them for you. And I hope we, I can build an audience. Uh, I really hope this will work because um, I can really use, um, I can really use um, some, some kind of love. Thank you so much if, you, if you're if you watching this. And tell your friends and I will have, ask me, some st if you want to hear some stories and I can go my, my whole life is a, it was a was a movie I tell you you know when I was younger I was I had um, I don't know I don't want to get into everything right now but I have stories that I think you will enjoy and then I have stories that I can tell you how to survive a prison I'd never had a I never had really a problem in prison. Every problem that I had, I straightened out. And once you straighten out one problem, people see that you straightened out a problem. I have, I can tell you how I got suckered in a, in a, in a three and one when, a, when, a, when these three guys were friends and they tried to hustle me and cards. They were all friends, so the guy I was playing with was helping these two guys. I ended up owing them money, and I ended up having to... Um, you know, really hurt one of these guys. And I'll tell you that whole story. If you join in 
to my YouTube channel. I think you will enjoy me. I am a good guy. I just had a hard life and an interesting life, but it wasn't easy. And I'm still here. So, thank you so much if you're listening. And please subscribe and, and like and tell your friends about me. Thank you. Bye-bye.